Hey, I'm Rob from JustTheRoad.com and this is a spoiler-free how to play for Borderlands, Mr. Torg's Arena of Badassery. This is a game for one to four players, plays at about 60 minutes per scenario, is designed by John Cadis and John Kovaleski and is published by Monster Fight Club. Players control four Vault Hunters, each with their own abilities. They use their equipment, as well as action tokens and dice, to fend off enemies as they try and complete the condition of the scenario. Progress through several scenarios in order to get to the boss of the campaign and defeat them to win. But first, knock knock, who's there? Hit subscribe. End of joke. So this would be spoiler free, showing only the first scenario of the scenario book and I'll show as few cards as possible. Players pick a Vault Hunter. Regardless of the player count, there will always be four in a game and the players will decide which ones they control. For each one, players take a Vault Hunter mini and card. Take the starting weapons from the gun deck as shown on the Vault Hunter card. For example, Mordecai starts with Quickshot and Muckamuck. Take the relevant colour action tokens ready side up. These are also on the Vault Hunter cards. Finally, players choose one of the Vault Hunter's three skill tree cards to start the game with. Shuffle the fans' favourite cards and deal one to each player. More on these later. Choose a random player to get the spotlight token. They keep it yellow side up. Set up scenario 1. The scenario book will show which tiles to use and how they are orientated. It also shows which tokens and minis to place in the arena. When setting up a scenario, look out for callouts marked with the three exclamation marks. Try not to read these until the scenario tells you to. Place the Vault Hunter minis in the arena next to the new use station, shown in the green starting zone. Place the starting cache stated in the scenario near the board. This is $1000 in scenario 1, along with all the dice. Put the loot tokens in the claptrap bag and mix them up. Note, these legendary loot tokens are not actual loot tokens and never go in the bag. Shuffle the event deck. Add the boss cards to the deck for the scenario. For this scenario, add the 5 red event cards related to the boss, Psycho Reaver. Shuffle the vending machine cards. Guns, ammo dump, Zed's meds and Torg into decks. Set the red tier 0 announcement card aside face up. For the first game, take all the tier 1 cards shown with the 1 icon at the bottom of the card. Shuffle them into the announcement deck. Lay out a number of cards shown in the scenario face up, which in this scenario is 4, and put the tier 0 card at the end of this row. A game is played over a number of rounds with 3 phases. The Vault Hunter phase, the Enemy phase, and the End of Round phase. In the Vault Hunter turn, any player will choose their Vault Hunter to activate. This will be known as their active model. There is no start player or turn order. Each Vault Hunter is activated completely in the order the players choose. But before we look at actions, we need to look at the zones on the board, line of sight, and range. A zone is one hex. A zone can hold three small base minis or one large base mini, then the zone is considered full. A large base mini cannot move into or through any zone with any other minis. Also, no one can walk into or through a full zone. Line of sight is drawn from the middle of the current zone to the target zone. Empty spaces outside of the arena and a zone containing an enemy count as blocked and line of sight cannot be drawn through a blocked tile. Passing the edge of a blocked zone is fine. For example, the line of sight between these two Vault Hunters is fine. However, passing multiple block zones, either in a row such as the example on the left, or between two block zones on the right, will block the line of sight. Range is shown in four colours. Red is 0 to 1 spaces away, yellow is 2 spaces away, green is 3 spaces, and the black is 4 plus spaces. You can only use weapons with the range shown on the card. For example, the Caracal can only target 2 and 3 spaces away as shown by the yellow and green bar. It can't target 0 to 1 spaces because that part of the range bar is blacked out, not red. The Undermining Mogul can only target 4 or more spaces away as shown by its range icon. Ok, actions can be found on the Vault Hunter's cards and gear. There are also 6 basic actions a Vault Hunter can take. Skill based actions have the relevant skill symbol next to them, just as the Caracal here has a ranged icon. The 6 skills are Willpower, Medical, Ranged, Reflexes, Melee and Tech. Actions with no skill icons are called easy actions and they're always successful, but you still have to exhaust an action token to take them. For free actions, you don't have to exhaust an action token. All of these actions follow the same five steps, which is basically work out what you need to roll, roll a die, and then see what happens. The action itself shows three key pieces of information. We'll use a range attack with this caracal as an example. The first is the skill icon related to the action, in this case, the range skill. The second is the range of the skill, and the third is the result of the action. In this case, an attack which is shown by the skull icon. Additionally, there is an effect of Rapid 2 for this weapon. The first step is to choose what action you're going to take, and we've just done that by saying we're doing a ranged attack with the Caracal. 
The second step is to determine the target number and when attacking this will be the target's defence. For example the Psycho has a defence of 6. Step 3 is to roll dice matching the colour of the action token exhausted to take this action and add associated skill value plus modifiers. For example Mordecai has 2 for the range skill so we'll add plus 2. For a free action that requires a die roll, the die can be of any colour of the action token the Vault Hunter has, be it ready or exhausted. With multiple targets, roll the die once and reply the results to all. Defence is rolled individually. For any skill roll that doesn't target an enemy, use the black d10 obstacle die instead. While we're here, grenades are a free action. The die rolled is of the colour shown with a tiny icon after the attack icon and goes out of ammo immediately. Turn it face down. You can only use one grenade per turn, even if it has since been reloaded in the same turn. Step 4 is to calculate the results. Equal to or higher than the target result is a success. The skull is a crit, an automatic success. A fumble is an automatic failure. Some characters have effects when you roll a crit or fumble. For example, on a fumble when attacking the Psycho, they will move three zones towards the Vault Hunter that attack them and attack if able. Step 5 is to apply the effects for success or the consequences for failure. For any special effects to occur, the action must be successful. If an enemy has a shield, they roll a die of that colour. If they roll greater than the Vault Hunter's roll, the attack is defended, exhaust the shield and prevent the wound. Wounds can be added to the mini or to their card if they're unique. If the number of wounds they gain meets or exceeds their health, they are removed from the board and may drop loot. When a unique enemy is defeated, they drop a legendary loot token in their zone. For other enemies, draw a loot token from the bag and those with a card draw icon are placed in the enemy zone. The rest are picked up by the Vault Hunter who takes out the enemy automatically. Let's look at the tokens. Health. Discard to gain 1 health plus medical skill. For example, Mordecai has 1 medical skill so will gain 2 health. To heal, replace a wounded action token with one of the original colour. Each point of healing may also remove any elemental tokens the Vault Hunter has. Ammo. Discard to refresh all equipped guns and grenades. Gun. Discard to perform the swap guns action for free. Cash. Use during the game to respawn or after the game to buy gear. Level. All Vault Hunters level up. The drawer of the token also heals all wounds and recharges all shields. On level up, place a skill token on a skill and gain the benefit immediately. The first skill gained will be the one on the top level, then any level under the previously unlocked skill, even the same level. This token is not reshuffled into the claptrap bag again this scenario. Bounty. Vault Hunters may go on a bounty after this scenario, so more on that later. This is not reshuffled into the claptrap bag in this scenario either. Card draw. Discard to draw a card of the matching type from the four small decks and gain that gear. Use tokens, except for the level and bounty which are set aside, are placed into a discard pile. If the bag is ever empty, put all loot tokens from the discard pile and from the arena back in the bag. Those with a resale value that are not used during the scenario can be sold to purchase new gear after the scenario has ended. There are six basic actions available to every Vault Hunter. Most of them require you to exhaust an action token. Whenever something is exhausted, be it a card or a token, it is turned face down. Move. This is an easy action and depending on the action token exhausted, move up to one adjacent zone using a red action token, up to two zones for yellow and up to three zones for green. Using a melee attack with the melee attack skill at 0 to 1 range is available to any Vault Hunter and is resolved the same way as shooting with a gun. Swap guns and equip gun with one from your inventory. This is an easy action so an action token needs to be exhausted to do this. Interact, this will be specified by the scenario. An action token needs to be exhausted, and if a die roll is required, it will be the same colour as the action token that was exhausted. Handoff, give or take any number of loot tokens in the same zone to or from another Vault Hunter. This is an easy action. Collect, pick up any number of available items of the zone the Vault Hunter is currently in. This is a free and easy action. Let's look at gear. A Vault Hunter has room for 7 gear cards, 2 weapons, shields, 1 grenade and 2 slots for mod cards. Shields will show which shield tokens are added when equipped. Newly gained gear can be equipped but if they don't have room they can put it in their inventory or they can swap one of their currently equipped weapons into their inventory and equip their newly picked up card. A Vault Hunter's inventory can hold 3 cards and they can be replaced if required to make room. Any discarded gear is shuffled back into the respective deck. Remember you can't swap out a shield with an exhausted token on it. The fan favourite will hold the spotlight token. If you meet the criteria on your fan favourite card, you take the spotlight. If the spotlight holder is taken out, the Vault Hunter with the boast red action tokens will take the spotlight token. Players choose on a tie. Once the Vault Hunter has taken all their actions or done all they want to do, the players will choose which Vault Hunter will activate next. When all Vault Hunters have activated, the phase ends and we move on to the next phase, the enemy phase. 
Follow the instructions on the leftmost face-up announcement card from top to bottom. All applicable enemies will activate each line on the announcement card. Those with a small base first, then those with a large base, and finally individual enemies in that order. They target the Vault Hunter in line of sight and range following this priority order. Firstly, they look to see if the Spotlight Holder is an available target. If not, they look for the Vault Hunter with the most red action tokens. If multiple Vault Hunters have the same number of red action tokens, they target the closest. And if it's still a tie, the players will choose which Vault Hunter they will target. Let's look at each of the commands on the announcement cards and see what they do. Activate Slaughter Light. Flip the Spotlight token over to the red side. The scenario will explain how this affects gameplay. Event. Draw the top event card and resolve it. These have different effects on the game. For example, Surprise will cause all enemies to immediately perform a special order. Move. Enemies move equal to the move value shown on their card towards the target, stopping when they get in range. Out of ammo. One Vault Hunter runs out of ammo. They exhaust all of their equipped guns and grenades. Gear in the inventory is not exhausted. Spawn. Spawn new enemies according to the spawn rules of the scenario. For example, in scenario 1 you will roll a d4 and spawn various enemies in the different spawn zones depending on the result. The unit card shows which minis to use and if they need a base ring. Place the first model in the spawning zone and later models in adjacent zones. Once all of those zones have at least one model in, place the rest of them in those zones. If all of these zones are full, spawn in the nearest adjacent zones. If you don't have enough models to spawn, spawn as many as you can. If you don't have any models to spawn because they're all on the board, that model type all take a move and attack action. To spawn a unique enemy, use a model of the type shown but add the shown base ring to them. If all minis of that type are on the board, remove them from the board, put a ring on it and spawn it as normal. Special. Enemies with a special action take that action top to bottom on their card. Attack. All enemies within line of sight and range will attack. Those not in range will take a move action instead. Enemy attacks automatically hit, but the Vault Hunters have a chance to defend. First, determine the target number, which is the enemy's strength plus any modifiers. For the Psycho, this is Strength 7. Then the defending Vault Hunter will select a token to defend with, either an action token or a refreshed shield token. The action token can be an exhausted one, as defending does not exhaust the action token. A Vault Hunter must use a refreshed shield token before using action tokens, if any are available, against attacks only. They roll the die equal to the colour of the action token, add their skill modifiers plus any bonuses. For example, the Psycho attack has the melee skill action. Mordecai does not have this skill so will add 0 to the value of his skill roll. If the shield token is used, modifiers are not added. Now check the results. If the roll is equal to or higher than the target number, the attack is defended. On a fail, swap the used yellow or red action token with a red one in the same state, either exhausted or refreshed, for each damage dealt. If defending with a shield, exhaust the shield token instead of taking a wound. You exhaust one shield token per wound taken and any additional wounds will go to the Vault Hunter. If a Vault Hunter fails to defend with a red action token, they are taken out and are removed from the board. If a Vault Hunter takes a wound, any Vault Hunter within range or line of sight of the attacker will be able to take a reaction. This is done by taking a regular attack action, interrupting the enemy turn. Each Vault Hunter can only use one reaction per attack and it's done in the order of the player's choosing. Once complete, the enemy continues their turn. If a Vault Hunter would be taken out, they have a chance to react and fight for their life. Before being removed from the board, they have a chance to take a reaction against any enemy. On any kill, they not only stay on the board, but they heal all wounds and recharge all shields. If a Vault Hunter is damaged outside of combat, they replace any of their yellow or green action tokens with a red one and are taken out if they are unable to do so. When healing, change back a red token to its original colour once per point of healing the Vault Hunter has. Sidekicks are a Vault Hunter's companion. Those that have a Psychic will start with them in the same space as the Vault Hunter. They take up space and act in the same way. They use their owner's action tokens to take actions and react. They never gain the spotlight, cannot be targeted by enemies or wounded unless a game effect says otherwise. If they would gain the spotlight, pick up a loot token or become the target of an attack, their owner does instead. Sidekicks are taken out and respawned with the Vault Hunter. They can't use the collect action, but can use other basic actions and can't interact with the scenario objectives. Psychics with their own action tokens can't share them with the Vault Hunter, but they can still benefit from the use of the Vault Hunter's own action tokens. Psychics with their own action tokens can react as normal. Once every line on the announcement card has been resolved by all enemies, this phase ends and we move to the end of round phase. First, perform a cleanup roll, roll a d4. On a fumble, move all loot tokens from the board and discard pile back into the bag. Remember not to put the legendary, bounty or level tokens in the bag. 
On a crit, remove effects from all models in the arena. Respawn Vault Hunters at the new U station. Pay 500 from a Vault Hunters card or the starting cash to do this. They come back with full health, shields recharged, elemental tokens removed and equipment reloaded. Use only cash to do this, you can't resell weapons to raise this money. Next you check for victory or defeat. If a Vault Hunter can't respawn during this end of round phase, the scenario ends in a loss. Read the loss condition in the scenario book. At this point in the game, you'll also check the win and loss condition of the scenario to see if the game ends. For example, in scenario 1 you win if you destroy all spawning zones and there is no loss condition. If the game continues, exhaust this round's announcement card. When the tier 0 card is active, it's never exhausted as repeated each round until the game ends. Players flip their exhausted action tokens face up and anything else that refreshes at the end of the round. Then start a new round. Ok, let's look at the things in the arena and how they work. Tires. Take up one space in the zone and give plus one defense for each pile of tires to each character in their zone. Barrels. Have a defense of five and can be attacked. If they are wounded, they explode. Remove the barrel and attack models in its zone with a d10 obstacle die versus the model's reflexes. If the barrel has an elemental effect, it applies to models in that zone. Don't place a barrel with a key on during setup unless the scenario says so. Skag vomit. Remove these from the arena with a basic collect action and gain the loot token from the bag. Ammo chest, loot chest, mailbox. Shuffle these face down and place randomly during setup. Take a basic action using a tech skill on a roll of 4 or higher, gain the reward shown. These rewards will see you draw gear cards or gain cash and other effects. Vending machine, use the basic interaction to flip it over. This has effects that occur after the scenario. Ok so the scenario will tell you when it ends and how to advance to the next scenario. In between scenarios, there are a few steps to do. Vending machines. Lay out two cards from each deck, one from the Torg deck. Add two or more of Zed's meds and or ammo dump if those vending machines were activated in the previous scenario. Starting with the spotlight holder and going clockwise, players may buy one card. Vault Hunters can spend cash and also use loot tokens and gear with the resale icon to pay for this new gear. Loot tokens are returned to the bag. They can also freely share cash and use the unused scenario cash to do this. Once everyone has finished buying, any unpurchased gear is shuffled back into the decks. You don't carry cash onto the next scenario, so make the most of it. Respec. Players can reassign their skill tokens. They can even change to any of the other Vault Hunter skill trees if they like. Rest, arm, recharge. Discard all unspent cash and return any loot tokens Vault Hunters have to the bag. Heal all wounds, recharge all shields and reload all guns and grenades. Also remove any game effects from the Vault Hunters and Vault Hunters are allowed to freely redistribute and swap equipment between themselves as much as they like. Modify announcements. There will always be 12 cards in this deck. If the Vault Hunters gained a level in the previous scenario, remove 4 random announcements of the lowest level and replace them with 4 of the next level up. For example, if we gained a level in this first scenario, all of the announcement cards in the deck are currently level 1. We'll choose 4 of them at random, choose 4 level 2 announcement cards at random and swap them out. Also, put the event discard part on the bottom of the event deck. This means you'll cycle through different cards as you play. Bounties. If the Vault Hunter earned a bounty in the previous scenario, they can go on a bounty. If they choose not to now, this opportunity is lost. If they do go, remove the bounty and level token from the bag. You can't gain levels or leads for other bounties while on a bounty. Draw a bounty card to choose your target. Roll a d10 to choose which map you'll use. These are on page 32 to 35 of the rulebook. For bounties, the announcement deck uses two cards, plus the zero card of course. Unique enemies start in the spawn zone. The non-unique start as if spawned following the regular spawn rules. There is no starting cash. If a Vault Hunter is taken out, they will lose the scenario and the only penalty is they won't gain any reward from it. Ignore the spawn order on announcement cards. When this is resolved, unique enemies perform a special order instead. For the slaughter light order, uniques recharge shields and heal 2 health and also gain deadly while the slaughter light is in effect. If successful, for a reward, draw 2 Torg cards and keep 1. After the bounty, follow the in-between scenario steps again. Finally, if you need to save the game, do it during this in-between phase and just track the Vault Hunter's level, equipment plus the current announcement and event deck. Advance to the final scenario, defeat the boss and win the game and that's how you play Borderlands Mr. Torg's Arena of Badassery. Thanks for watching, remember to like, share and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when a new video goes live. You can follow me on threads, Insta, Twitch and YouTube at Jester the Rogue and find the blog at JesterTheRogue.com. I've been Rob aka Jester the Rogue and I'll see you soon.